Dear classmate, welcome back to the diagnosis chapter. In this video, we are going to introduce the second single stock cap for diagnosis technique, the dynamic cause effect diagnosis. We call this a dynamic technique because the fault dictionary can change with test failure. The procedure to perform dynamic cause effect diagnosis is first test CUT on the tester and then select a few candidate faults. Second, force simulate this candidate faults to generate a partial fault dictionary. The following two pictures show the difference between static and the dynamic cause effect diagnosis. For static cause effect diagnosis, there is no information exchange between test failure and the force simulator. However, for dynamic cause effect diagnosis, we feed the information of test failure and uh, we select a small number of candidate faults. We simulate this small number of faults to produce a partial fault dictionary. The key issue is that which faults should we select for simulation? We need a very fast algorithm to select the faults. One idea proposed by Wachikowski is that we can remove impossible candidate faults based on both structural and logic value information. There are three steps in the proposed method. First, we perform structural backtracing. Second, we perform parity check. And third, we perform excitation condition check. These three steps will be explained in details later. Please note that this technique assumes only one single stack F4 at a time. Now let's revisit the same circuit under diagnosis. We apply four test patterns to test this circuit. The first column is the first test pattern and the last column is the fourth test pattern. This circuit has two outputs. The first line shows the good output values and the second line shows the defective CUD output values. The failing outputs are underlined. So we can summarize the test failures in this table. When we perform a dynamic cause effect diagnosis in step one, we perform structural backtracing. In this step, we assume that the true candidate for must be in the intersection of the fan in cones. If we backtrace from all the failing pins, for example, in this circuit, we have two failing pins, output 7 and the output 8. If we perform a structural backtrace, we obtain two fanning cones. The triangle in red color is the fanning cone of output 7. The triangle in blue color is the fan cone of output 8. The true candidate 4 must be in the intersection of two triangles. The original 4 list has 14 faults. For the first 4, input 1, stuck at 1 4, is in the intersection. So this 4 could be a true candidate. For the second four, 
and the third four, they are both inside the triangle intersection. However, for the fourth four, input three stuck at one four, it is not inside the intersection of two triangle. So this four cannot be the true candidate four. We can continue to do this check and then we will have six folds remain. This is our candidate for list after step one. In step two, we will perform a parity check for a true candidate stuck at V fold it must satisfy the following condition v exclusive or p is equal to f where v is the stuck at value of the four f is the cud output value at the failing pin and the p is the inversion parity on the propagation path where one represent odd inversion parity and the zero represent even inversion parity. We can see from this figure, if we have a stuck at V4 and uh, we travel through a path with two inversion where P can be equal to zero, then the output value F must be consistent with V exclusive or P. If a 4 fails this parity check, we can eliminate it because it cannot be a true candidate 4. For failing pattern number 1, the good output is 1. However, the CUD output is zero. So the value of f is equal to zero. Now let's check the input two stuck at zero four. The value of v is equal to zero. On the propagation path, we have one inverter. So the inversion parity is one. If we plug in these values into our equation where V exclusive or P should be equal to F, we know that this 4 failed this check. So this 4 should be eliminated from our candidate 4 list. For the second 4, 4 all stuck at 1, we can perform the same check where v is equal to 1. There is only one inversion on the propagation path. So p is equal to 1. And the CUD output is equal to 1. If we plug in these values, again this 4 fail the parity check. So this 4 should be eliminated. However, if we check 4 O stuck at 0, 4, where V is 0, P is 1, and F is 1, this is consistent with our parity check. So this 4 still remains in our candidate 4 list. Continue from our first step, we had 6 4 remains. After step 2, we now eliminate two fourths. So we have only four fourths remain in this candidate for this. Now it's a time for a quiz. Consider this simple circuit and only three fourths. A input A stuck at one, J stuck at zero, Q stuck at one and we apply three test patterns 010, 001, and 100. 
the good output R110 and the observed CUD output is 010. Now please use the parity check technique to see which of these three faults should be eliminated. Now please pause the video and do this exercise. Have you got the answers? For the first four, A stuck at one four, the value of V is of course one. The propagation path has one inversion, so P is one. And the output value of the failing pattern is equal to zero. So when we plug in this into our equation, this is consistent. So this four is not eliminated. However, for J stuck at zero four, because this four is not consistent with our equation, so this four should be eliminated from our candidate four list. For Q stuck at one four, it is consistent, so it is not eliminated. Overall, we have reduced the four list from three fourths to two fourths. In step three, we perform excitation condition check. For a true candidate N stuck at V fold, the value V must differ from N's good value in a failing pattern. For a single stuck at four, if V is the same as N's good value, then the fold is not excited by this failing pattern. So this four should be eliminated from our candidate four list. Back to our same example circuit. Consider input two stuck at one four. In the first failing pattern, where the good value of input two is one, this is the same as the stuck at value. So input two stuck at one four cannot be our candidate four, which should be eliminated. Similarly, four I two stuck at one four should also be eliminated. Continue from the second step where we had four faults. After step three, we can eliminate these two faults. So we are left with only two faults in the candidate for list. Starting from the original four list, which has 16 faults, after step one, structure backtrace, we have only six faults remains. After step two, parity check, we are now left with only four faults. After the third step, only two faults remain. Therefore, we can simulate only two candidate faults to produce the partial fault dictionary, which is much smaller than the complete fault dictionary. When we compare the test failure with the partial fault dictionary, we can identify 40 stuck at 04 is diagnosed as the most likely fault. It's now time for quiz again. Continued from the last quiz problem, we now only have two faults to consider. Input A stuck at one fault and the Q stuck at one fault. We apply the same patterns. Good outputs are one one zero, 
and we observe CUD output R010. Please use the step 3, excitation condition check, to see which force should be eliminated. Please pause your video and work on this problem. Now, are you ready for answers? For A stack at 1 4, the stack type value is 1, and the good value in the first pattern is 0. These two values are not the same. So A stack at 1 4 could be a true candidate. However, for Q stack at 1 4, the stack type value is 1. And the good value is also 1. So this 4 cannot be a true candidate 4. We can eliminate Q stuck at 1 4. Have you got it correctly? In summary, in this video, we have introduced the dynamic cause effect diagnosis technique. We first test the CUD, then we select a few candidate faults to simulate. In this video, we introduce three steps to select candidate force. Step 1, structural backtracing. Step 2, parity check. And step 3, excitation condition check. After candidate four selection, we can generate a small partial fault dictionary to save the storage space. This is a very useful technique which is widely used in commercial tools. Before we end this video, we have one food for thought for you to think about. In step 2, we perform parity check. However, if we have a final branch reconvergence, as is shown in this figure, can we still apply step 2? In this example, the upper path had odd parity and the lower path has even parity. Can we still apply step 2? If so, what is the inversion parity? If not, please ex provide your explanation. Thank you for watching.